In this video, I'm going to discuss the functional tester that I use for the Raspberry Pi hats that I make and sell. First, if you have purchased a Pi hat from me, thank you. I hope it has helped complete whatever project you are making. Your support is really what allows me to make these videos and more projects. So for normal printed circuit board assembly production, there is both manufacturing and testing. I won't go into too much detail about the manufacturing, but I do have the boards custom made and mostly assembled. Volume is pretty low, so in order to keep the cost down, I install the two main connectors on each board by hand. This gives me the ability to inspect some of the surface mount assembly and make sure that the connector is installed as straight as possible. After final assembly, the board is cleaned with isopropyl alcohol and is ready for functional testing. Most high volume manufacturers will have different types of testers depending on the board. There are in-circuit testers, functional testers, and flying probe testers. Since in-circuit and flying probe testers require huge machines that cost thousands of dollars, I prefer a functional tester. Most testers use a bed of nails to interface with the unit under test. These pogo pins are spring-loaded and come in different sizes and shapes depending on the pin pitch of your board and whether you are trying to connect with a pin or a hole. The physical tester is always custom, but I found the basic housing available on AliExpress. This tester is made of cheap fiberglass, but it is the perfect size. For just under $100, it saves me a lot of time designing and building my own. Also, I should mention that it doesn't come with any instructions on how to build it. You need to figure it out based on the pictures that they provide. I wanted a Raspberry Pi to actually run the testing, so I mounted a 7-inch LCD using a spare piece of aluminum angle iron and 3D printed spacers. The LCD has a Pi mounted on the back. I preferred to keep the Pi on the back of the LCD to keep the LCD wires short. The wires from the 40-pin header can be extended. The tester comes with three acrylic plates that need to be machined so the board and pogo pins can be installed. This is where I use my CNC router to drill the holes. I didn't want to change the router bit, so I drilled tiny holes, then opened them up to the correct diameter as necessary on the drill press. This worked fine for smaller holes, but the large drill holes caught the acrylic and broke it. So if you are drilling large holes in acrylic, please step up the drill bit size slowly. I will eventually replace this acrylic plate with a new one, but this still functions. If properly designed for testability, the circuit board should have all the test point probe locations on the bottom side of the board. I failed miserably in this regard, so my tester is now twice as complicated. I used a combination of 3D printing and custom printed circuit boards to hold up the pogo pins that connect both the top and bottom of the board. The top pins interface with the 40 pin Pi header and the bottom pins interface with the DB25 connector. The unit under test is intended to be placed on the top of the center plate. That center plate should also be drilled as a guide for the pogo pins to keep them from getting bent. The center plate should also have the tooling pins that orient the board accurately on the fixture. The top plate needs fingers that press the board down so that it makes contact with the bottom pogo pins. I used screws for this, and I really like how they can be adjusted. In a perfect world, these would be designed in a 3D CAD tool and be a fixed length, but this also works just fine. The pogo pins have two parts. The replaceable pin fits inside the tube that gets soldered to the fixture. I made custom boards to solder the pins to, so they can be located accurately. 3D printed brackets also help adjust the pin height and location. Inside the tester is another custom circuit board that breaks out the power pins. This allows the switches on the front to control the 3.3 and 5 volt power to the unit under test. You may notice this board has a rather noticeable blemish of a circuit board hanging off the side. When I first started making this tester, it worked fine with shorter cables, but after adding the inner circuit board, it ceased to communicate with the EEPROM chip. So I had to add an I2C booster chip that will help drive the longer wires of the I2C bus. The Raspberry Pi Foundation has very good and easy documentation about how to make a Pi hat. In order to officially call it a hat, it needs to meet certain requirements. 
One of those is the onboard EEPROM that tells the Pi what pin configuration it is. That EEPROM chip needs to be programmed with the correct information as part of the functional test. There is a free utility that can configure and program the EEPROM, and that is what I use. On the hat boards, the EEPROM write protect pin is pulled high, meaning the EEPROM chip cannot be written to under normal circumstances. The pin on the functional tester will make contact with the test point on the bottom of the board and ground that write protect pin, enabling the functional tester to write data to the EEPROM chip. Since I have two separate hats with DB25 connectors, and could possibly make more, I wanted this tester to be as versatile as possible. So the bottom pogo pins really just go to another DB25 connector that is mounted to the side of the tester. This allows me to plug in what I call a personality board. This custom board allows me to easily swap hardware when testing the two boards. The parallel hat has five inputs and 12 outputs. This personality board has buttons for inputs and LEDs for outputs. The software needed to test these I.O. is really just a simple C program that uses the wiring Pi library to access and control the Pi pins. If a button is pressed or released, it will print out a message. The outputs are cycled all the time intentionally. On a functional tester like this, you don't want to turn on all the out outputs or turn them off all at the same time because a short could exist on the board between two adjacent output pins. By cycling the outputs one at a time, you can visually see a change in the output that would indicate a manufacturing defect. Overall, the board can be programmed and tested in just about a minute. This is much better than what I used to do. Previously, I had to turn the Pi off, plug in the hat, turn it back on and let it boot up, then program the EEPROM and check the I.O. with a multimeter. This took at least about five minutes and was quite tedious. As with all of my videos, I know some things could be done differently or a lot better, but the real intent is to describe what I have done so that you can build on that experience for your own projects. I build lots of things, both electrical and mechanical, so if you would like to know what I build next, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I hope this video has been interesting. If so, please hit the like button. See you next time.